was afraid of you. Yes. <laughs> I need a microphone. Maybe to sit down. No, okay. You need to sit down for the first time. What Kevin has told us has direct connection to Talmud. Look at this picture. It's belying. You don't understand the picture. It's a half a picture. The other half is me. We are dancing at sunset by the Kinneret, the day she was told the cancer is back. This was the way the Talmud knew something that remained mysterious, secret, love. Our friends took the picture, tears in the eyes, and Talma is smiling. I'll go back to the hospital <coughs> that uh, Karen just mentioned. Uh, in the last days, the last three days, she was hospitalized, only the last three days. My two sons, stayed the night with her, and early in the morning I replaced them. They're not here now because they got stuck in a traffic jam in Hedera. <laughs> so they called me and said, I'm sorry, but they are here. <clears throat> I came to replace them. Talma was as beautiful, thinner, something which is like a, um, a queen of the lost tribe, something different, else and a friend from the States who came to depart brought flowers. At that moment, Dila, who was the head nurse, came to the room and told her, told her, Gila, you were here until midnight. What are you doing at 7 o'clock here? This was Tom. And then our friend Tova gave her a bunch of flowers. Talma had the flowers and told us a story. A good friend of hers is still with us, Stanis Berber, the conductor. He was a, a childhood friend of Talma. He built a new house in Beit Zayit years ago, and Talma came to visit him, and she brought nothing. So she picked flowers from his garden <laughs> and gave it to him, and as you laugh, she laughed and passed away. With the flowers in hand, don't live. It sounds like a fairy tale. She was a very good girl. And toda la chuk, toda la chuk, toda la kulam, toda, toda la kulam. I will just mention, I see, I see Milet and Helen here. Talma knew that she's not going to, she knew exactly, you know, the span of her future. I think she bought a present for, I think Milet was expecting, and, and Helen's son was to, be, to get married. So Tama bought, bought presents in advance, give them, and return stuff to people. And it was, she taught us how to die. It's the greatest lesson. You can't explain how. It's so funny, in one, one of the big articles that was published you know, after she passed away, they interviewed me and uh, I write poetry. And they say, Talma was the poem. And it's beyond description. Toda, toda, toda. Thank you. I just have to admit, I still have an ink pot that she returned to me. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Uh, um, if there are questions, uh, I, I, the problem with this kind of poetry is it's not taught because it speaks for itself. So it doesn't get to go get into the uh, syllabus. So but was it there probably are such questions. Hmm? Was it published during those days? People it was published in, he wrote them in 1875. He spent 13 years, couldn't get them published. 1888, someone published them as a book. Uh, it didn't make it. I mean, it didn't, you know, it wasn't widely received. It was uh, because it wasn't in the fashion. It wasn't understood. It's not poetic. Karen, do you know if uh, poetry is in fact taught? Uh, yeah, it's taught. 
It's used in palliative care. The, uh, Florida State University is the center of the world for that, strangely enough. But they, and they've made films uh, that are, are, are astounding. Uh, and the way, it's not just palliative care, it's also recovery. Uh, but they use it in different ways as well. They do it, you know, they, they get people to talk about themselves as people. Uh, that people don't usually do that. Uh, don't do that, especially to patients who are a terminal. Um, they get people to write about their past, but they also get people to memorize poems like uh, Invictus, uh, things like that. Yes, there, there's, it's, very, it's becoming very popular as a, uh, as a kind of therapy. Um, after World War I, um, Jane Austen was read to uh, recuperating soldiers um, in England, soldiers, uh, traumatized soldiers, and um, it was uh, one of the first examples of that kind of a therapeutic, a kind of a, a thing to a therapy, if you will. So, um, again, something familiar, something grounded, something comfortable, and um, um, one of the first places of and that's uh, actually, it's soldiers who are the, the first ones who uh, bring, bring it to the attention of uh, the medical you know, world that, that there's a need for some kind of uh, uh, expression. It's art therapy, the, uh, the poetry narrative. I didn't know about Jane Austen. She puts me to sleep. <laughs> so are there any other questions? No, okay. I, I, I do thank you very much for listening to this. Okay, well, uh, there should be a reception outside. So.